There we go. Okay, thanks everybody for joining in. I had a, uh, we have a unique situation in the world with the, with the coronavirus and everybody's talking about the world has legitimately changed and it has in a number of ways. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to live in an area that has some, um, some real depth with regards to the, the dimensions of this spirituality and how they might be applied to other areas of life. One of those is my friend, Mike McDougall. Mike is the uh, owner of San Su Tulsa. And I'm, Mike, would you tell them what the rest of your credentials are? Cause they're lengthy. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I'm just a, I guess a guy that's no. had the advantage of taking <laughs> uh, Number one, my parents beat me as a young child. So um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, um, I was set up with older parents. Uh, I'm, my, my parents were born basically 100 years ago at this time. My mother was born in 1916. So I, I've had the advantage of, <clears throat> of uh, a journey with my and I got, uh, I'm fortunate enough to join the Marine Corps. Uh, they um, <laughs> kind of woke me up a little bit, if you will. Uh, I really saw there that I was able to do a lot of things uh, that I didn't didn't really nobody believed I could do, and um, you know I became like the honor man out of boot camp, got into force recon and things like that, and then um, realized that really what my path was, my really or goal was education. So when I got out of the military, I used my GI Bill and was fortunate enough to get to work with Rockwell after I got my AMP license, and then it just was you know one degree path, one you know certification after another. Um, the cool thing is, is in my corporate life, um, I've been able to help probably about 4,500 people get a job that maybe have been nothing more than hamburger flippers and, uh, join in places like, uh, satellite systems, like the GPS block two satellite, the GPS that we all utilize. Um, I, uh, built and trained the workforce that, uh, that built that for Rockwell International, uh, you know, things like that. <clears throat> um. You know, currently, um, I still work for a corporate organization. I uh, still do some, some of what that same stuff is. Um, but my real passion is my martial arts business. I own sand suits also, like you say. And, uh, you know, I've got two that, uh, you know, stand with me and have uh, really honestly showed me uh, the, the old ways. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, really been, it's really been fortunate to bring back what my parents set me up to do and, um, you know, the educational path has. And hopefully now that as I approach into the elder status, maybe I can, I can help others. I think that's, that's one of the reasons I, I really wanted to talk to you tonight, because <clears throat> when we talk about everything changed and, and uh, I had a good time at your house the other night and I really appreciate your hospitality. We had like two and a half pages of notes. I'm just talking of things that we, we, we both have in common with the, the discipline and the idea that the, it's almost a linear path. It's almost a real laid out structured path with also true, but <clears throat> I want to talk to you first about Sansu. I want to talk to you about the studio because we're looking at a time when these major corporations, we have CEOs in there that have, they have a, a set path, a set structure. They can kind of coast and go through the motions and show up on TV and appease the stockholders. And that's not necessarily the case anymore. They're, they're facing leadership challenges that I think many CEOs in corporate America are not qualified to handle. And I think it's going to be detrimental. You know, the strong are going to survive in this scenario. But you made some decisions just in your, in your little studio that made a big difference. I mean, first of all, tell them how many people you lost. I mean, tell them how badly that affected the mom and pop business that you, that you run. I hate to call it mom and pop. It's not... It's not in any way to denigrate it, but it no, is. Yeah, uh, we're mom and pop. I mean, my uh, my shield maiden, my wife is uh, obviously my my side to this, and like I said, my sons are are integral part of it. Chase and uh, Brandon McDougall. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, uh, it's it's interesting uh, when when this you know virus hit. Um, you know, I. We were about to have our best year yet. We were a hundred and about twenty-five students and growing, and um, right now I'm at forty-five. So that's, it, that's almost that's seventy percent almost, isn't it? Right, right. It is, and uh, 
So, you know, we could have, uh, you know, we could have said, oh, shit, you know, we're dead, roll over, like, you know, several people did around here and just kind of sat on their, on their thumbs or whatever like that. But, you know, we, we kind of said, fuck that. How can we go out? We'd always been, uh, we'd really been set up to do videos and stuff. So in 60 days, uh, basically, we shot 45, I think we shot our 47th video Friday night, uh, training video on our website. I think we've got, I don't know, I'd have, I, I'm sorry, I can't actually quote the right number, but I'm sure we got over five of them published. And um, we were able to, we immediately went out and started staying in contact with all of our students. If they if they couldn't pay, you know, what can we, can we work with you to, to um, what kind of discount can you work with, you know, or anything like that? Um, you know, uh, if, you, if you need food, can I help you get food? You know, what whatever we could do with, with, our, with our clientele. And, and uh, anyway, uh, we've had, we've had the people that stayed with us have stayed with us strong and, um, you know, um, we're working with my uh, landlord and, you know, I've got a little, uh, uh, latitude on rent for a couple of months here and things like that, but it's still something you're going to have to pay. But, you know, yeah. it's, uh, um, bottom line is, is, uh, we now actually have something that's going to enhance our, as we <laughs> actually, we enrolled another six people in virtual classes because of our videos, which didn't think that was going to happen because we were really doing it just to keep our students that we had. Mm-hmm. And uh, then uh, now we have, since how we've started the basics, any new person that comes in, we have a video that you can go see after class uh, to where you can review the material. So um, it's something that's going to really enhance our service to our students because that's really where we're from. Uh, a lot of people come into the martial arts wanting to be served if they're the teacher or I don't know, almost like they want to serve you if you're the master or some kind of crap like that. But our whole goal is your skills, um, you know, when you go out because we're about combat martial arts and there's no there's no second chance. Uh, you know, street fight or self-defense is an ambush, not something we plan for. Right. It ain't pretty. It ain't pretty no. at all. <laughs> that is a, uh, a concept that, that is at the heart, I think, of, of being a leader in any scenario, including a leader in Ossetru or any kind of these pagan faiths. How do you get an individual to enroll in the idea? I mean, we can get all kinds of people to subscribe to it. We can get all kinds of people to go onto a Facebook page and buy a hammer and they're a heathen. Yeah, but, but you're talking about doing something very special with regards to basic leadership and i think that escapes most people in in also true as well as in business today it's because the principles we're talking about are the same thing how do we get an individual to enroll in the ideas that are going to allow them to be the most successful while allowing me also to pursue a path that results in my own success how do we inspire I, others to want to do what we know must be done what do you think about i mean because you seem to have worked out a plan that that's going to yield long-term benefits in addition to your regular uh, rates, you'll be able to make a little bit of money on the side, maybe 25, 30, even 40% increase your profit margin on that, on those videos as well. That's correct. So uh, the, the, go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say, you know, the, 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 the big thing is, is, you know, if you're really out to serve people, you know, my, my customers, the people that walk through my door and their abilities <laughs> walk out the door, you know? And uh, so, goodness, <clears throat> if I'm not serving them, if they're not growing, if they're not learning, then what the hell am I doing? So I think the first thing I try to get people to understand is what are your goals and what's in it for you and why should you care? You know, if, if you're going to enroll somebody, and I don't know of any adult that's probably on this channel right now that doesn't have the same concept when they're talking to someone like, you know, why should I listen to them? Why should you listen to me? or anyone else, you know, because really the question becomes, how does this serve me and where it is I want to go? And that's where the average person is. So, you know, I've reached a point now where I'm able to help others. I've, I've been able, I can take care of myself. Now I can teach others to take care of them. So if you will, in the, in, in our spiritual growth and everything else, it's really kind of me, the same thing as, as I got to first develop my base and something I can stand on and give me a platform before I can go out and I can help others and enable them now to do for themselves. Because I'm not gonna fight for you. That's that's something that I, I have had the hardest time with in, in, in Austria is as I've always said that we needed an image. 
that we need an image that's going to help an individual want to try some of these things to navigate through the uh, the things that hold them back in life. And I think martial arts is a, is a key component to that. I mean, the, this whole year, we're going to try to talk about taking action. I think the cultivation of the of a being's physical senses or physical capabilities is crucial to our ability to become a well-rounded individual. But when you're talking about getting them enrolled or getting them idea, how do we, when we, we start talking about the image? So a lot of people will listen to you. A lot of people will listen to me. And there's some other people on here that a lot of people, a lot of people will listen to. They'll pay attention to what we have to say. Getting them to implement that because it's going to be good for them is a real challenge. And I don't think that a lot of individuals that are in Austin True or the business world for, for, for sure are necessarily interested in that. I think the greater interest is in trying to prove how right they are. I'm more <laughs> right than you. But see, that, that doesn't lead to the, the development of a well-rounded, strong, fully functioning and capable individual. They will subscribe to I've always, I get tickled by the righteous indignation of political ideas is a key component for a lot of people to manipulate individuals around them. And I use the term manipulation because it's not true leadership. It's low hanging fruit that doesn't really ever bear anything productive. <laughs> so when we, when we're looking at these businesses that are trying to survive, and there's people in this, in this meeting, and there'll be people that listen to this on YouTube that are trying to run a business that are, and indeed they may be looking at their home now as a business, as they should be. What's your best advice on getting them to bite the bullet and take that hard step? Because that's the biggest challenge is actually walking through the door of that gym. And then we're going to talk about, about marketing on this thing. How do we convince them of the need to be a well-rounded individual? I think you said something about, when you were training those individuals at, uh, for the satellites in uh, Cal LA, there was uh, an yeah, issue. Yeah, satellite, in, uh, satellite systems in Seal Beach, California. Yeah. You said that, the, what was it? You said they, the first class went through and did very well, but the second class went through and you added a kicker to it. I don't remember what that kicker was. Well, the, the, the cool thing with the, the second class is you always learn from the front, from the first. And, and, you know, with our first groups that we went through, um, many of them, honest to God, they came from places like South Central LA and things like that. That I'll be honest with you, whenever I first went in as an instructor, I didn't think, um, you know, I was going to be successful. Uh, but then I got over that rather quickly because I saw how hungry the people really were for, for change, and which was um, a pleasant surprise. And um, many of those people went on to become employee of the month, if not employee of the year or whatever like that. And, you know, got uh, promoted. But what we didn't do is we didn't prepare them for um, making money because uh, many of them had been uh, maybe third or fourth generation welfare. And so our second group, we made sure that we took time out at the end of the program that for those people we knew that was going to go forward and said, hey, you know, here's about credit and checkbooks and, you know, some things like that so that they didn't run into the same catastrophes that some of the first persons did. How successful was it teaching them about working with money and being financial? You know, it, it really comes down to, you can lead a horse to water, you know, honestly, right. those, well, those people that pay attention and those people that, that, you know, um, you know, picked it up and actually wanted to try to do better and stuff like that. It's just like anything else. You, you know, you're talking about action. You know, I, I can, I bet everybody on this channel, knows what to do. The question is, are we doing it? <laughs> I suck at it. I'm just going to tell you right now. It's a struggle. You know, buddy. We all do. <laughs> we're human, you know? I mean, I'm a human. I have to kick my ass every now and then and tell myself I'm such a bitch, you know, and get the fuck up. <laughs> you know? And if you're not doing that, then you're probably not really being honest with you, you know? That's the real thing, too, is being honest with ourselves. I, I You know, it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to take a good, honest appraisal of ourselves and see where we need to develop. It's hard to really look at ourselves and say, man, I really could have done better at that. How do I overcome that? How do we, you know, I can find it in the lore. I, I can tell you exactly where that shit's at. I can do two or three places, show you how maybe he could have done a little bit better, but look, he kept trying and this is what he become. 
Thor is a prime example of it. He was a savage brute through the whole thing. And then finally, when the important time comes and he's got to stand up for his daughter, there emerges a real dutiful father and, and, and being protecting the integrity of his home against Elvis. <laughs> um, that's one of the things about success. When you were uh, talking about the old, the, the older people that were, that trained you, you know, I had, uh, mine was the same way. I was in much later than you. I mean, I got out, I, I went in in 89 and uh, got out in 96 of the infantry. And my, my first platoon sergeant was a Vietnam vet. God damn, he was tough. He fucking hated my guts. I'm just going to be honest about it. He couldn't stand me, but I, I, uh, I didn't get resentful about him. I didn't get, uh, I didn't get chicken shit. You know, I did exactly what he said and I did it to the best that I could. And we eventually, and to this day, we're still good friends. So no vet. He's a, he was a, he was a sheriff up in Washington. Um, may not have been the coolest dude on the block, but you know what? I didn't have any doubt that if I followed him and worked with him, it's probably going to be all right running through that fucking DMZ in Korea. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you build that in your students? Because that's the real well, question we're all trying to deal with. How do we build that in these people? You know, we all talk about the warrior mentality, but here's what the warrior mentality is for me and what I try to get people to understand. In, um, in the corporate world, I can walk out and I can give somebody a technical Okay, maybe it's electrical assembly or some sort of structural assembly or whatever. You know, this uh, today big thing that I'm dealing with is uh, composite uh, fabrication bonding, they call it, and stuff right, like right. that. Now, I can walk in and I can give the keys and the Cadillac and everything to the leadership and the people that are there. And what do they do with it? I can teach someone how to properly do a job. And when they go to the floor, I, you know, I can, I can guarantee you what they know when they leave me, but I can't guarantee you what you're going to do with it. So the thing I love about the warrior arts is, is when people come in and I tell them to keep their hands up, it ain't but a minute they get the feedback why they need to keep their damn hands up. <laughs> that ain't no joke. <laughs> that is no joke. Fucking chase so, quick. You know, so is Brandon. Man, we don't just beat up on the new people when they come in. I mean, honestly, and stuff like that. We don't Brandon pokes me in the eye. Yeah. That little shit yeah. just went... Hey. Right. You know, but, uh, but, you know, that's the honest thing of it is, is, you know, people want to look at things and they want to argue about it. It's like your keyboard warriors want to argue to me about, you know, what my martial arts can do or what it can't do. Well, you know, I'm five, six, I'm still alive. And I got a lot of fucking scars all over my damn body that says, you know, um, that's how I got the experience of where I'm at and why I know what works. You know, I, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm not a paper tiger and my sons aren't paper tigers. Yeah, you I know. know? You know, so, you know, the thing of it is, is, uh, you know, you got to be real with that shit. You know, if a guy comes at you with a knife, he's going to cut you. You know, if a guy's going to shoot you with a gun, you know, you're, 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 you know, just how far, how far does it take for the finger to travel before you're in dire straits if that bullet hits you, you know, and things like that. So, you know, if you're really going to put things in, on, on a life scale, and, and I think that's what I look at whenever I look at business or, or even try to look at my day-to-day -day life is, you know, I need to take care of the little things and I need to not be all booty hurt about it because, you know, that's what really is going to save your bacon. And it's that constant handling of that nagging bullshit that if you don't take care of that, it adds up and eats your lunch. You yes, know? it will. It absolutely will. You know, and then the other thing is being real about things. You know, uh, do you or do you not have the money? You know, uh, are you really into business or are you into, into playing business? You know, I mean, there's a, there's a, are you, do you really want to be a martial artist or you just want the cool little uniform and, and the pretty little belt? You know, what, what is it, what is it you're really about? Because martial arts isn't about the uniform. Martial arts, Sansu that we teach, Kung Fu Sansu is an ancient Chinese, basically, if you will, Krav Maga. And um, it uh, was made because they knew that the people down south couldn't get to speed fast enough. So they, with the old way, so they had to break down everything that they knew to be true to teach these people how to fight and how to fight now. And the thing of it is, is the novice, everyone there had to take a place in the village defense. So, you know, if you were, a, it didn't matter if you were a white belt or a yellow belt, you took your place in the wall. You know, if you were a black belt, you were a seasoned uh, expert or something like that, if you will. And they really didn't have belts. It's just a kind of a time and grade for people today to understand the skills of those people, you know? Right. So you, know, it, 
you, you start looking at things a lot differently at that point. You're not going to argue about it. You're going to try to learn it and make damn sure you can apply it. You know, so, you know, if I'm going to be a welder, uh, then, you know, learn everything you damn well can and be the best damn welder out there and kick people's ass about your welding, you know, be competitive, you know, uh, about it. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I'm people, I, I don't know. I, I get on my soapbox kind of like I did the other night, you know, but uh, uh, it, it's, you know, people got to realize, man, that, you know, life is for real. You can, you know, we, we have, I, like right now, the conversation we're having, this is, um, yeah. would have been impossible how many years ago. You know, the difference between the 1700s and today is electricity and the internet. Yeah, it's true. You know, I mean, it's the speed of information and what we got. I mean, instantaneously. I mean, I can go get a microwave and, you know, eat up my pizza or whatever, you know I mean? It's, um, it's amazing. So I think when you start talking about enrolling people is one is, is can you get them grounded into what it is we're really trying to accomplish here? And I, you know, and for me, it's just like when I teach fighters, uh, or people that come in saying they want to learn to defend themselves is, you know, realize from the point of view of Krav Maga, we look at a, uh, just like we did in the Marine Corps and just like you did in the infantry, uh, it's an ambush, you know, and yeah. an ambush. No, is no place to be and it's a surprise and it's terrifying you know and i don't care how fucking bad you think you are you know you're going to be startled <laughs> yeah yes you will <laughs> you and know it, it's true and you got to give maximum effort i mean i love that deadpool maximum effort <laughs> because you do you really got to give 110 percent for as quick as you can as hard as you can because yes you might, not, you might not come out of it see there's a um that's the thing is in, in the martial arts, you're doing it for a reason. You're going to come out, you're, you're expecting to develop yourself into an individual that might survive that initial engagement. <laughs> when it comes to the spirituality and developing a well-rounded individual, I mean, we, we, we build our bodies, we work on our emotions, we, we develop our mental uh, capacities by reading books. But the, the, the development of the spiritual and the development of the physical uh, it will indeed all four aspects of the individual. They're all really tightly interconnected. You know, it's very hard if you haven't suffered a little bit in one of those rooms somewhere, sometime, um, to understand what your limits are. And it's a, and, the, and those that's I think that's always a real proving ground for ego. I think that's a real place where ego might begin to take root. Those individuals that haven't tested themselves or haven't gone in there and really push themselves to the limit and been had a bloody nose or busted an ear or had a tooth knocked out or any of that other kind of shit. Um, I think that we're trying, this is one of the things that I, I have a hard time in Austria with. I mean, I, I've laid out a foundation of, of ideas of how to think about this for the last year. And I don't know if they're right, but I know for me, they help me move forward. Um, if some individual they come in and they get a part of it. It's like me, I go to Sansu for six months, then I go out into the bar and I beat somebody up. Well, that really does, I mean, that's ridiculous. But that's the kind of thing that happens, isn't it? I mean, they come in there, they learn a little thing, and the next thing you know, they're the baddest dude in town. Even though Chase was, what was he back then? 145 pounds, throwing me around. At 200 pounds, he was throwing me around. I hurt your feelings, but 135. See, I ain't hurting my feelings. That dude knows his shit. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> but it was worth it. You know, I mean, there's a humility. I mean, when you go in there and you become teachable, there's, the real, there's a real interesting thing that happens with, with the individual when he, when he develops the capacity to become teachable. I think that's, that's the whole idea of Sigurd slaying the dragon. He is, he is killing that body of knowledge that represents such a dire threat, malevolence and evil in the society. Um, and he doesn't exactly come away unscathed. He, come, he comes away cursed. But he, he rids himself of all of that stuff that, that someone else put in his head that that was the enemy. And he proved himself. He became somebody worthy of walking through the fire to cut free the Bernie from, from Sigurd Riva, that complementary competing opposite of the yin and the yang, if you will, of masculine and feminine energies. And in that moment, there's a real special understanding that occurs. But I digress. <laughs> when we uh what's your next move as far as building the building the studio up well actually we've been uh, very aggressive we because of all the um data that we have right now it's another thing is you know if you if you're putting stuff in um 
if you can collect data like that, if you can do it like one of my old mentors told me, if you can do something and um, use it many ways, then right. you you really, your, your efforts uh, compound themselves, right? So by having all these videos, uh, one, is it's given us a new revenue stream. It's given us something to, that's a new marketing thing to do. Uh, we're touting that and our, of course, we're blitzing everything. Uh, we can, uh, I've got about a thousand some odd people in an email list. I annoy them quite constantly, uh, you, know, uh, yeah. you know, but they like it because I get a lot of feedback from it, you know, and again, I'm not trying to send them anything that, uh, you know, I, I don't, again, I'm not trying to sell people. That's, I guess that's the whole thing is I want people to enroll in their life. And I think one of the most important thing that people need to understand is defense of yourself or, you know, nothing else, just can you do a push up sometimes? Um, which is your confidence. And if you can do that in one area of your life, like physical fitness or martial arts or something like that, then you'll be amazed at how it spreads over to the other aspects of your life. You know, and it's uh, so, you know, I think that's the positiveness of it. And I think also true in particular gives us the vehicle which to do that. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a newbie, really, to this stuff. I mean, I'm just a couple of three years. I mean, how long ago was it you were at my house having a summer here? We did winter nights there. Uh, has it been four years? I think maybe it has. Like yeah. 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 It's been a you minute. Know, so, you know, so, you know, I, like I said, I'm kind of a newbie to all this and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's the thing I love about it is the accountability and what we're talking about. You know, I've, I've always been aligned with my ancestors. Um, you know, we just recently found what our, our family lineage is and where it goes and all that stuff. And it's really cool to us, you know, and stuff like mm. that, you know, so, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, that's the whole thing is I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my ancestors. Now I don't necessarily answer for their bullshit, you know, or where they went or anything like that, but you know, I'm damn proud of where I am. And, you know, most of them made some pretty, all my, all the men are down the road, made some pretty damn amazing compliments uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, so. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they're not present or anything like that, you know, but, you know, it's just like me. I'll, all I'm trying to do is I'm just another guy, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to make a difference. Uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to focus out. I, I think I've got my shit together for the most part, but like most humans, there's parts of my life that are fucked up just like anybody else, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're, so you're always worried. And that's the whole thing is if I can't be honest about that to you, then how can you trust me? It's true. It's true you don't have honesty and trust you'll never be able to cultivate the kind of love you need to in your life ever yeah it's humility so and vulnerability are two words i had the biggest damn time with. I'm, not, I'm not fond of them either god damn it <laughs> i don't like them at all humility because okay. there's there's always this connotation with humility that it was forced upon you like humble pie oh he had to eat some humble pie on that one he's gonna have to eat some crow now so this there's this idea of humility that, of it being forced upon you because you put your foot in your mouth or stepped on your crank. And that's not really the case. You know, huh? if, you, if you're going through a crucible though, that's the whole thing is what a lot yeah. of people don't understand is what really forms you that and gives you that humility is the crucible that you go through and you realize that no matter what my physical body says, my mental body is stronger if I choose to take it there. That is true. And that's, that's another thing. I, I think that's one of the, there's so many, <laughs> there's no longer that legitimate proving ground for young men to show that they have the, the mental toughness to compete at a level that their fathers expect them to. And we never really get that approval from our fathers in a lot of ways. So I'm, you're of that older generation. See, my grandfather was born in 1916. So there's a, there's a generation removed there, but there's, this is that kind of Ansu's wisdom that we, we've got to learn to cultivate. There's a real different thought process. And the idea of mental toughness is, was expected. I mean, it was, it was expected. And that might mean a tough situation and doing the right thing. And, it, and that, we seem to be losing that to safe places. We seem to be losing that to the easier, softer path or drug addiction or even the righteous indignation of some some other idea, uh, just about anything to sidestep the idea of I have to push my body a little bit harder. I have to push myself a little bit further. I have to take one more step. I don't know how many times I did a 25 mile road march in full gear in, this, in my service. I mean, more times than I can really count, but 
every one of them sucked ass. I'm just going to tell you. But I began to understand after the first three or four that I could do this. Matter of fact, all of a sudden I can lead men in doing this because I pushed right. myself. And that's the thing that, that we, we don't see. Now, <laughs> it's really hard to do that in a spirituality because it's, there's a lot of us that expect to feel, well, we want to feel some kind of contentment. We want to feel some kind of confidence. But I don't think you can just talk about it and get that. I think you have to get out there and take a little bit of a beating in life to be able to pick it up. You know what I mean? I do. So the, um, the whole year of action, I mean, <laughs> we have people on here, people from all over the world are going to see this. What's going to be the best way for them to, to reach out to you and take a look at some of the things that you have to offer? Well, obviously one of the targets is sansutulsa.com. That's our, that's our website. I'm also on Facebook. Um, I'm a member of, uh, you know, the noble heathen. So you know, right. there's a couple of different ways you can you can reach me or whatever out there. Um, you know, um, like I said, I'm just I'm just another guy here that you know. What I find is a lot of times that we talk things over. Um, you know, perhaps there's a way that we can teach, we can coach, or we can mentor the person. Um, you know, to get where they want to go. You know, that's something I forgot to bring up. Um, there's a lot of women in uh, that that I know personally have the absolute worst image of themselves because mm -hmm. of abusive relationships, poor relationships with their father or their mother, any number of ideas. Men will bury that shit. They'll, they'll suck it up and they'll go to work. And, and then they're expecting a woman to tell him he's man enough. And she's sitting here hoping that he's going to recognize her as the prettiest thing in the room. There's just real conflict there. We have both worked with, females that have been dealing with excessive abuse. Talk a little bit about the transformation that you've seen with individuals of women who have grabbed the bull by the horns and really tried this stuff. Well, one of I mean, the, I've got one right now that just came in. Matter of fact, um, she, uh, she calls me up one day and says, you know, I'm a pacifist. I think of, why are you calling me? You know? <laughs> Obviously, I'm not, you know, and she goes, well, I think if I learned to fight, I wouldn't have to fight. I'm sitting there going, you know, lady, you're probably the first person that's really hit the nail on the head before you walked in the door. It's true. You know? It's true. So, uh, so anyway, you know, she's been abused. She's been molested and, um, you know, a number of different things and stuff. And, um, you know, she's not real physically fit and what have you. But. Um, one of the beauties of why I've chosen Krav Maga is one of my keys for teaching people, especially new people and stuff. It's because it's the way they, it's a, it's an instructional strategy set it up to get people up to speed fastest is right. when they learn all the, your um, point of reference. Um, you know, as you know, in an ambush, you have a, you have a, uh, a, a, we might call it an SOP in the military or something like that, yes. but we call it a point of, a point of reference. Somebody comes at me, I know what to do right away. I go to this and I just go right to this, these strikes and try to move this, get offline, go here, boom. And um, the amazing thing is, is we have eight people a year that may come in four to six, eight times, not months, not weeks, but visits to this thing. Mm -hmm. And something happens and they actually defend themselves with just that stupid POR that we've taught them. You know, which goes back to like the military, you know, you don't need to know a lot. You just need to execute a damn, you know, quick right. and hard, you know, 110%, yeah. you know. So, so anyway, um, you yeah, know, so the, all of a sudden they realize that, you know, because we tell them, look, don't, don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. It takes time. You know, you haven't, you haven't rolled, you haven't done a forward roll in 20 years. It's probably not a good day to start, you know. Right. So <laughs> let's, let's get into this. When we tell everybody else to do it. Let's give you something else to do or something like that. But before you know it, they're doing forward rolls. And before you know it, they're doing the push-ups. And before you know it, they're doing the pull-ups. And then before you know it, the lady is about, you know, three dress sizes smaller and um, getting a new job, you know, yeah. or something like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, which is really not uncommon. And same for a lot of the guys, uh, you know, realistically today. Um, I had one young man walk in, and I swear to God, if I was to classify him as anything, he looked like the Cowardly Lion from The Wizard of Oz. And today he's a competitor in jiu-jitsu, you know, and 
hungry to go get the next match. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's quite awesome to see these transformations of these people. And, you know, also with him, his job went from mediocre little wash dishes craft, and now he works for a major manufacturer, you know, and making good dough. So, you know, I mean, he's, we're not in the penthouse or whatever, but is that what we really are after, you know, or, or, or are we after number one, let's just try to get, get ourselves stable and know that we can take care of ourselves, you know? We got to build some kind of functional idea of where we might launch ourselves from when the opportunity presents itself. And that's the thing I think we're missing a lot of. And I think these kind of martial arts, physical fitness, these kind of things are, are essential in helping us build that foundation, the action necessary to cement the foundation in place. So we might be able to gravitate towards the opportunities as they present themselves. And I think people, a lot of people are afraid to take the risk. I think that's the real big deal. What if I fail? What if it doesn't go the way I think? What if it uh, turns south? Well, you know, I think we spend so much time talking ourselves out of success that we, we really don't understand what it might look like anymore. And I think usually it's a good punch in the gut that, that helps you figure that out again. I don't want to be hit in the gut anymore. You know, it's just that simple. I don't want to get hit in the eye. It hurts. You know, right. it gets real simple real quick. And I think that's where we got to start. Um, with spirituality, it's, it's, so, it's so easy to sidestep this or sidestep that. But when you begin to combine the two and you begin to read about it and you begin to put your heart into some of these things and you become this complete, well-rounded individual, now all of a sudden all of these ideas that people talk about being available to you, they're now all of a sudden they're not so nebulous anymore. Now all of a sudden there's a real potential for that kind of stuff to happen. There's a real understanding that this is a legitimate part of your future you can expect. And that's, <laughs> that's why I'm, I get so tickled talking to you guys. Cause I see that in your boys. I mean, your boys just exude that kind of confidence. You walk up to them, talk to them. They're not fucking shy at all. And they're not arrogant either. You know what I mean? They're just, they right. exude that kind of confidence. You raise them with that. The, um, well Arrogant. I mean, that's the other thing is, is why approach someone with arrogance? You know, I mean, um, the, the funny thing is no one knows anybody. When you, when you meet someone, you're, you're making a decision about that individual right off the bat. You, you based on past experiences and stuff like that, you are profiling. Okay. Bad word. <laughs> <It's true. you> know? <laughs> why the fuck not? Aren't you profiling? The question is, is where am I going in my mental aspects with that profile? So I may look at a person and I may have a total judgment going on in my mind, but I've learned to bite my damn tongue and to listen and to explore further with that individual to really test and see if it's really going on. And that's in listening. I can't go talk to them and learn anything about them. I need to get them to talk about themselves so I can understand what's up. And so you know, are you friend or foe or whatever, where, where, where we go from here? How can I find common ground with you? So hopefully we're not some sign of uh, foe or whatever, you know, if you really will go down that path. But, um, you know, I find it all the time. People, um, people just, they, they want, it seems, well, I hate to be so general, but um, in, a, in a large uh, capacity of the people that I deal with today, they don't really know how to compete. It's and and the world is competition. You know, we haven't done any, um, you know, getting back on my soapbox, we haven't done any, uh, any favors by giving everybody a damn trophy. And why are you not putting a freaking grades on the side of the damn door at school? Because I guarantee you, you come to work for me and I'm going to grade you. Yeah, I am too. And you're going to be paid or not working for me accordingly. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it, it is. And that's the, that's the reality of the world. And, and who amongst us, you know, is probably any different. You know, the question is, is, do I really understand what it is I'm, I'm about? I mean, and do I, have a, do I have a way of getting there, you know, and do I have a way of maintaining it? You know, now in the manufacturing world, you know, uh, when I'm dealing with the big wigs and shit like that, I talk about flow, first pass shield, and standard ops and standard work. Flow is, if my shit ain't moving through my manufacturing facility, and if it's setting anywhere, it's costing you money. If it ain't moving, it's costing you money. Okay, you know, factory floor space is expensive, machines are expensive, people are expensive. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and then you know, if it's not good the first time, then you're pouring money down the well. I hate to tell you this, right? 
Uh, and then what holds that together? Well, we look at it to be the concept of standard op or standard work. Standard op is basically how I connect shit, like shift to shift, department to department, whatever. You know, uh, op, the work is actually, how do you do that? You know, and, and, and so that we know we can maintain the pace and the flow of our products. And the idea is to enroll everybody in the, and this is my, my uh, supplier, or, uh, I'm, the, I'm the provider, and this is my customer, you know, all the way through the value chain. You know, and so when you when you utilize that mentality, it allows you to actually bring a team concept to the workforce, much like everybody does with their little leagues team out there. I mean, I have guys that are um, been in management forever and they can't manage a workforce to save their ass. I'm sorry. You know, just to be honest, I could name names, but I value my 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 job and reputation for the present time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, but yet they'll talk about their little league team and everything they're saying is go, why the fuck are you not bringing that into work here? Because you know, if they can't block and tackle, then you can't do your job. And, you know, really, uh, when you really break it down to any organization or whatever, number one is, you know, what's my boundaries and expectations? You know, uh, do I have any training? Right. And, do I, you know, that kind of shit going down, right. You know, it's, it comes down to people, uh, process and performance. And if you're not taking care of people, then what are you doing? Because that's really what it makes. Everybody wants to move to a robotic world, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm really against that. You know, where's the worth and where's the, where's the, the craftsmanship that you can do as individuals? It's just that unfortunately, as we get more unionized or other things like that, we tend to lose that competitive edge and that desire to do more. Now there's a, granted, there's a place between where you got safety and doing things and stuff like that, that you got to maintain, you know, I'm not saying throw all caution to the wind, but you know, in the context of, you know, delivering a quality product safely to my customer on time, you know, isn't that what we want when we walk into McDonald's or whatever? Or if, if I'm if I'm walking into a martial arts school or hell, if I'm walking into Ossetru, you know, how how does this how does this set me up? That's exactly right. How does it set me up for success? How does it set me up to demonstrate my qualifications? How does it demonstrate the efficiency with which I can do the task at hand? Um, the craftsmanship idea that you talked about, there's a lot of freedom in a, in a man or a woman's thought process when they're handling the task at hand with the skill of many years of craftsmanship. When Milena is painting, I'm sure her mind is thinking about all kinds of things. She's probably developing some kind of insight. I mean, she's a truly talented artist. So when she's working, doing these things, focusing on that brushstroke, it becomes automatic when I'm working on a tower, when I'm climbing or when I'm hanging pipe or when I'm doing some of these other tasks that are mundane and don't require a lot of thought. My body goes on autopilot, but my mind is allowed to reach into areas of it that it never really goes to it, you know, on a daily basis. We're too busy focused on other shit. And when you're talking about streamlining the performance of the manufacturing floor, it's the same thing people get focused on other shit that doesn't have, that's not helping you do what you're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. I don't, think, I don't think that, I don't think that a lot of us understand what we're supposed to be doing. Well, I think the thing that people realize too, like, just like what you're talking about is when you're driving or something yeah. like that, yeah. you know, when, when you, when you reach a certain level of, uh, you know, your mind, your, your subconscious mind is free to explore which is kind of crazy you're driving down the road you're having this you know i just <laughs> free mind where the hell is my mind went you know kind of thing but but uh but much like that what you're talking about you know and it, and it does it does open up your mind to to thinking and to deeper thought and things like that so you know and it's just like um uh, uh, you know using the concept of exercise and men mental stuff when i was going through my master's program um i had two small boys and um you know, I was hell bent for leather. I was going to make it through this no matter what. And, uh, you know, I was going to be a father doing it and stuff like that. So I had to make a lot of changes and stuff. And what I really discovered at that time was, is that the mental breaks that I took every 20, 30 minutes or so to be with my boys gave me some physical activity, which helped balance from the physical to the mental. I mean, it was really kind of, um, uh, something that, uh, just it was an experience I had I just you know it wasn't something anybody ever told me about or anything like that and then you know you kind of look at it from the yin and yang concept well you've got a lot of that out there you know uh, 
uh, allows me to, and so if I'm going to do something very physical, I need to do something mental. If I'm going to do something very mental, I need to do something physical. You know, it, it really kind of keeps your body in a, in a bank account that allows you to perform. If you're, if, if you're not moving, that blood just kind of pools up. You know what I mean? Right. If, if you eat lunch and you're sitting there not really moving, you'll get sleepy and your performance goes down. But if you do get, I mean, that's what, who was it? Dan Pena, you know, he's all, he's all big on that. You know, the, what the successful CEOs do, they got a treadmill in their office. They'll exercise three to five times a week. They usually have a standing desk or a standing work area of some kind. Right. They're always up and moving. They're, they're tying the two together. And it's not magical by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something that, that hunters use on a regular basis. Uh, soldiers use on a regular basis. They're moving and they're sharp. And that's the way we were built to be. That's the way generations of genetics have, we have eyes in the front of our heads so we can see we're predators. We're right. built to hunt <laughs> or built to look for the right roots or the right plant. We're built to pay attention to the environment around us. We're not really doing that anymore. We're losing track of that to some extent. Craftsmanship. Well, see, okay. At the studio, you know, when Morgan and I are doing the videos and stuff like that, and uh, we're into editing mode and stuff, you know, we got to stop. We get up and go get our sticks, you know, and we go out and we, we work stick drills and beat the crap out of each other for, you know, 20 minutes and, you know, come back and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it's just, um, you, you've, you've got to do something to keep yourself going, you know, or you get stagnant, you know, and um, I don't know. It's, uh, I find that too many people just want to, sit in a chair and think which is okay but what are you going to do after that you know i mean you can sit in front of the computer just like sit in front of the editing stuff we're doing stuff you know and we're we're making things happen but it's not helping my health necessarily it might help my wallet somewhere down the road so how do i how do i shift gears you know to go make sure i do that hell i'm turning 65 coming up here pretty soon you know and you know i'm trying to i'm trying to beat beat back you know uh father time as much as i can you know i'm when I go, you know, I want to make sure that I slide in all used up. <laughs> I think I'm pretty good in that area. I'm working on it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We're reading the same book, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there pretty good. <laughs> that's uh, that's important, though. Yeah, we do need to slide into a finish. I mean, there's, there's, a, uh, there's so much of us, so many of us that expect a gift for a gift. And sometimes that they don't understand that that gift is the cultivation of the gifts that we were given in the in, in the original, uh, a good thought process, goodly color, and, and and all of those things that Odin, Billy, and Vey bestowed upon us. They they really cover it all. Um, when we just my gift, is what I'm able to contribute. You know, I mean, that's my gift to others is is to reach to a certain level to where I have something to contribute. If I'm going to have a tribe, you know, we've we've had all kinds of interesting. Uh, uh, things and challenges within the dark horse, you know, clan that we have. And, um, you know, I, I was reading a thing the other day on the noble minded healer, you know, and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, we, I had this, we all kind of looked at that and said, yep, that's, uh, we've experienced the same kind of stuff. It's just, you know, we're crazy and still, you know, maintaining it, but we've discovered that, you know, there's a lot of people that want to come in and say they want to be part just like anything else, but, uh, and maybe they'll go through a couple of crucibles. But right. in reality, they really don't want to, they really don't want to change their life. You know, they, they really don't, they want somebody to do it for them. They, they're looking for to belong and not have to contribute. Well, why are you in the tribe? Yeah. What is, what is, what is my purpose within the tribe? How do I, how do I help and contribute to my, to my fellows? You know, and you know, the other thing is, is, is education. A lot of people look at education and go, you know, I, it's, it's stupid to go to school or whatever. Well, you know, I got to admit, there's been a lot of classes I've gone to that were pretty stupid. But, you know, the other reality is, is that survival, you know, that whole thing that we used to say about adapt, improvise and overcome. Well, if you ain't a quick study and you can't learn quickly. Yeah. You know, my job has never been anybody train me. I had to go figure it out and to go train and develop it for others. You it's, know, so, yeah. you know, so so why are you waiting for someone else? You know, if you look back, you know, a hundred or a couple of hundred years ago, you know, when you went to college, you learned everything by 
you know, lantern uh, before you ever went to college, you know, and stuff like that at home, pretty much by yourself, by someone loaning you a book, you know, yeah. so, you know, how, how much do you really want that knowledge? You know, what's really your driving force? I don't think you know, are you getting up in the morning? Are you getting up in the morning? Really? I, I'm going to do this, you know? So, so that's the thing I love about, you know, your, your latest book, you know, is <laughs> my man. <laughs> you know? I mean, I got to say your latest book, I, you know, I just finished it here the other day and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to start it up and read it again. You know, I'm, I'm really interested in that. Um, but you know, it's like, it's like you were talking about, you know, slaying your dragon. Well, you know, where'd you get your information from? Why, you know, did, did, did you really make an informed decision when you went to do that or not? You know, I mean, it's true. We got a lot of people not making, they're not making those informed decisions. They're not, they're, 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 it, it's so much easier to not take the risk of making that informed decision and chancing being wrong uh, than it is to just go ahead and just get mad about something. Because it's okay if you and I are mad. I mean, we're, we're white males in the United States of America. If we're mad about some shit, people expect that. People understand that. They can, they can, they can, they can, but when we sit back and make an informed decision, they're always taking a little bit of back. They're always kind of surprised. Well, wait a minute. Now I've got to readjust how I'm going to approach this situation. Uh, when you're talking about education, you know, I, every time I hear that, you know, I think, you know, there's a lot of things I can do in this world. There's a lot of things I can do exceptionally well. I don't have a single piece of paper that says I know how to do it. I mean, and you know, the funny thing is there's two colleges, uh, you know, and I have friends. Matter of fact, I had a, a brother-in-law, God rest his soul, that was one of the uh, top engineers for uh, Rockwell, and he did not have a degree. And matter of fact, they had, they had him in a little room with two guys and he was doing stuff off the shelf for the uh, Air Force and stuff. And, you know, I'll be damned if there's any map today that will ever show you that building ever existed, you right. know, and like that. So, so, you know, you can get there a lot of ways. There's the college like you've gone through, you know, mm -hmm. I just happen to be in the corporate world. And if you're going to do that kind of crap, then you've got to have a freaking piece of paper. So, True. you know, um, you know, that's the thing I learned in the military is, you know, I volunteered for every damn thing. I don't care if they want to train me how to wash the damn trash cans, you know, or drive a truck, you know, or whatever, you know, it didn't, didn't, didn't matter. You know, I, I took whatever they could. And following that on outside, as I got out of the military, um, I was, because uh, I tell you, as, as a kid in high school, I finally woke up about my senior year, to, just so I get the fuck out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I got to tell you, they, they woke me up because it really had a purpose to keep me alive, you know, and, uh, you know, I kind of valued that. And um, so, you know, as you as you go out in the world and, and stuff, it's just like me. I'm trying to learn still about the rooms and and uh, a lot of things. You know, my education is, is still got a lot to do here, you know, I'm, but uh, but from the standpoint of, of uh, you know, being a member of my tribe, being a contributor and stuff like that. Well, I want to be educated. I, I, I want to be, uh, you know, as knowledgeable as I can, so I can share and you and I can converse and we can see what, what needs to be true based on our situation because not everybody wears a size eight shoe. That's you know, true. They, the, That's the academic so people tell you, just do this. Well, just like the guy down the street, you know, from my uh, studio, well, when you walk into history, he says, oh, you just do this, you'll always win. Well, I don't know if he's ever discovered about people <laughs> but they never copy everything you expect them to do, you know? So anyway, you know. I'm always reading stuff that, and it's not necessarily all also true. A lot, I read a lot of psychology books. I read a lot of history books. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I listen to a lot of people whose thought process I respect. And then I have some really close people around me. I mean, you're one of them that, that present, bring out a point of view that I may not always be aware of because you're right. Not everybody is the same. And I get calls all the time of people that are in a tough spot in life. And, you know, you, you don't have the, the, the privilege of an office setting where you might catalog each of the small neuroses that a person may be dealing with in life to take one at a time over a period of time. It's usually more often than not in this scenario when people show up here. And you talked about it last night or, or Friday night. You know, nobody shows up to the church because everything is going hunky dory in their life. And that means this one too. And when they get in that crisis situation, when they get in that situation where they're thinking about taking their life or doing something stupid, um, 
you don't have that luxury. And one shoe doesn't fit all. And it's, it, it can be a real challenge. And, and I, I accept that's, I mean, that's kind of my, that's kind of what I, the burden I have to bear up under. And I, it's, uh, it's been immensely rewarding. It's immensely stressful, but it's also, I think it's also, it's also tinged with a lot of love. And I think that's one of the things that we miss. I don't think that individuals who haven't cultivated true confidence within themselves have what it takes to understand what that means. You know what I mean? I just yes. don't think they do. I, I think that, I think they can come close. I think they can find a workable solution in life, <laughs> but to find those things that really count. Well, you know, what's your purpose? It really, you know, like we talked about the other night, you know, I mean, right. um, yes. You know, I think purpose I, you know, the sad thing is the sad thing with all of our military guys that are coming back from Iraq and stuff like that, that are, that are, you know, killing themselves and stuff like that is just atrocious. And, you know, I, I finally talked to a young man um, here a while back at my studio, just so happened he came in, there's supposed to be a group of them. He's the only one that came in. So it's kind of funny how uh, the fates comply on that, but um, people show up, don't they? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you know, conversation i had with him you know it, it come to find out that you know that's that's really what what it, it's by him doing what we were doing was giving him purpose and by meeting me and you know being another fellow military person that kind of under, that understood maybe i haven't been exactly where you've been but you know because i i was i was a willing ear and stuff really what it got down to is is you know what the fuck do i do when i get out of the military they tell me what to do they tell me where to go they tell me whatever you know fuck this i'm getting out then all of a sudden i get out and what do i do what there's what where do i go what's my mission uh you know things like that so the i think for no. people what what is my purpose you know and, and as long as you got that people that retire and when i worked work for uh for rockwell my god people were 20 years my senior and, um, you know, they started retiring shortly, you know, after I, I got in there. And um, uh, those that had purpose, some of them are still alive, but those that didn't, they did the two years on a dirt nap. And I, it was amazing how many of those people there was. So I think, you know, if you're really struggling with stuff out there is, you know, what is it that motivates you and find that as your purpose and go chase it. You know, don't, don't listen to what other people tell you. You know, I mean... Uh, if I did everything people told me what to do, number one, I'd have never joined the Marine Corps. Right? Right. I'd have never went to the schools I went to. Uh, I'd have never opened a martial arts school, uh, you know, and, you know, things like that. And, you know, and, and that's the other thing is if you're going to open a business, you know, you don't need to go get all this third party crap. God dang it. Get Excel, you know, and, and write yourself down a basic business plan and, and go for it, you know, and, and, you know, watch your checkbook, you know, watch your money coming in and money going on. I mean, it's not, it's not a rocket science, honest to God, you know, <laughs> people want to make it, people want to make it like it's some, you know, secret thing, but it's no different than just managing your own checkbook at home. It, you know, that's, it was the same thing for me, but I think um, Everett Farnell and I are working on putting together something called permission, purpose, and power, because I don't think, I think a lot of people are looking for permission to go, to go be great. They're looking for that permission to go find a purpose. I mean, I really and truly in it. And I, I'm just, I'm just enough of an asshole and enough of a C student to realize, not realize that it couldn't be done. And I went and did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's, the, the funny thing you say there, when you say that's hilarious, because um, you can ask either of my boys, we oftentimes tell a new student, give yourself permission. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the ones that they're the ones that's holding themselves back. It says, you know, look, the only thing that needs to happen here is you need to give yourself permission to do this. You that's know who you deals with it? Is is when men come out of prison. When men come out of prison, they got a bunch of shit hanging over their head. Now they feel like they've done their time a lot of the time, but they don't have permission to go be great. And I think there's I think there's a real commonality with those stressful situations maybe not the wholesale slaughter level that's engaged in the military, but I think, I think women need permission to be pretty. I think men permission need permission to go be successful. I think women need to be permission to go be successful. And I think that the cultivation of the strength you're talking about, you know, with, with, with the discipline of martial arts. And I think, also true for me has has given me that permission because like i said the other night if there was a rule about writing a book writing and publishing a book i broke that fucker in half <laughs> now i'm not on the new york times bestseller list but i also know why 
that uh, I broke them all, but I, I, I just too dumb to quit. You know what I mean? Well, I think there's a lot to be said for that, but we got to start. That might be something that really needs to be hammered on. I, I'm probably going to pick that up next week. Just giving yourself permission to go be something, go out there and try to go out there and, and compete. Yeah. Because if people don't, you know, they don't, they don't have permission to compete. Well, I might not be good enough. Don't talk yourself out of fucking success. Damn. Get up and claim it. You know what? I, I, you know, okay, I, today I'm considered a martial arts master. Yeah, you I know, know. I, was a, I, I was a white belt once. Right. That's exactly and, right. And, you know, I laugh at people come in because they're more gifted than I ever was. You know, I just. They tried I, to I tell me you had a funky left leg. Time. I managed to beat myself or the people beat me into submission to where I finally got it or something. I don't know. But, <laughs> but that whole thing, I just didn't quit. I That's just it, didn't man. Same with my educational paths and stuff like that. Hell, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I went to college, I said, you're a dumbass, you know? And so, you know, I had to take some classes, you know? Now, what was interesting is in the military, they had taught me, you know, uh, application of certain things, which really what tuned me into things and what have you. But, uh, but, you know, I had to go back and do a bunch of remedial classes. And I listened to a lot of crap from a lot of people because I was older than they were in the classes. But you know what? I laughed today because... I had to take these headphones out. Can you put them in my charger box? I, don't I, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about because I dropped out of high school spring break of my senior year. And I, uh, when I joined the Army, they said, buddy, you got to have a high school diploma. So I went back to take one course, one English course, and the rest were all elective. So I went back and went a whole year with my little sister's class. And uh, I was older than all of them. I felt like a dumbass, but I wanted to get in the army because I knew that was my future. It was the only way I was going to get out of where I was at. And I went that year and I got my high school diploma. So I, even at that level, I understood you got to try. You got to fucking try. And I think I, we all know that, but I think it goes back to what you're saying is you got to give yourself permission. You got to get out of your own way yeah. to move forward. You know, yeah. and if there's, there's, of faith on this planet that lines with you know my beliefs as a warrior you know this one has given me that gift I if i look at the noble virtues the nine characteristics you know that if i just hold that up you know that's fine you know i'm 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 armed when i leave the house and i'm absolutely happy that i am and people have no idea that i am you know nice. but i need a weapon to be armed you know because i have my mind my number one weapon it's true well hey we've been going at this for over an hour now. And uh, oh, I want to open up the floor. If anybody has any questions about anything we talked about tonight, any kind of observations, man, I'd love to hear them. Share it with us and let's see what you got, man. Let's see what you got. I mean, Mike's, Mike's also got just about every kind of qualification you can imagine in production and human resources. How many, and I don't know how many different martial arts. I know Sansu, Krav Maga, and I don't know about your maestro, but I know that's not no joke either. Um, yeah. So there's any kind of question you have for him or I, we'd love to field him right now. If not, we will. Uh, I think I have a question. I think we got an answer. So uh, sorry for the long preface here, but you guys were talking for quite a while. Um, nope. So um, first of all, uh, Mike, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. There's a, there's a lot to learn from you and I hope we can have a chance to pick your brain quite a bit more in the future. Um, but the one of the things that you said earlier when you were talking about uh, the history of your, your system that you teach uh, kind of piqued my attention. So I want to go back to that. Uh, I, don't rem I don't know much at all about Chinese martial arts, but what little I remember reading, it's like you can divide it into northern and southern styles. And so the thing that I'm curious about is, is Sun Tzu... Um, is it related to, and does it look anything like that legendary Southern Chinese martial art called Wing Chun? So what's interesting, um, if you will, is that um, your Dan Su basically comes from the eclectic that comes out of the North. And um, so you find within its movements, the Wing Chun, you find basically it's, it's the oldest form of Kung Fu, written Kung Fu there is. The guy that, that introduced it to the world was a guy named Jimmy H. Wu. And uh, from my understanding, he had to pay someone to be able to translate the ancient Chinese texts. Um, 
you know, so that he could actually teach it. Now, again, I don't know, you know, yeah, all this stuff is 100% or something like that. But the bottom line is um, all the movements that you find from Wing Chun or anything else like that are found in Sansu. Now, do we harp on the particular Wing Chun things? No, we don't. Um, so it's, um, it, but it takes you a pretty wild ride. You will eventually get to just about, in a lesson standpoint, probably using a little bit of every style. It's pretty good stuff, man. I'll tell you that. You know, we're out on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you can go find Sansu Tulsa on YouTube. You can see some of the flavors of it. Um, you know, I, I like the, we, of course, we cross train the Filipino martial arts, uh, C-Lot, uh, which comes from our master of defense systems that my boys are both certified in. Um, uh, so it, the body can only move in so many ways. And uh, the Kung Fu gives you a hell of a base. The rest of them just kind of refine the movements. I like it. Okay, so I have a question. So uh, me and my daughter, we do Kenpo. And I really love that. But so can it, would it be okay to like do since like your guys' form at the same time? Like, is that confusing? Or would it be like a contribution? So, um, I don't know. Absolutely not. If you go look at the origin of Kenpo, um, you'll find that Jimmy Wu gave Ed Parker a lot of a lot of these basic uh, lessons. The difference in Kenpo versus Sansu is we react to the strikes and the punches. So therefore you do a symbolic um, uh, kind of uh, workout in the two man set so that if you push, punch me in the head, I'll move my head back like I'm hit. It looks a lot like a, if you will, like a stunt man, but uh, it, when you get into the, what we call freestyle, then you're able to go pretty hard with one another without hurting one another and still be able to pull off the techniques. So my answer to that would be no, actually, in my opinion, from a combat sense, it would probably, uh, help you a lot. One of my instructors, uh, Mark Turner, is a second degree black belt in Kenpo, and he's going around to all the Kenpo programs around here in Oklahoma. Um, and uh, they're trying to figure out how can we know so much, and it's just Sansu. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I do want to, I'm going to take a second and I'm going to tell you that I actually looked up your website while we were on here. Cool. <laughs> So I've seen that your um, uh, virtual stuff for every month is only like thirty nine ninety five. <laughs> I was like, I could do both. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And the beauty of is with our virtual that we have right now, you don't just get Sansu, you get you get uh, Krav Maga, kickboxing, all kinds of stuff. We we just been kind of been dumping it in there for our students. So like I said, there's a, there's even uh, some uh, combat conditioning with the mace and um, all kinds of stuff in there. That mace is no joke, man. If you get a chance to get a hold of a mace and work it, it's amazing what it'll do. Oh for my you. God. Yep. No doubt. I mean, both of us have shoulder issues and the mace is just eradicated um, any kind of shoulder pain for me in, in bench press or anything else that I oh, do. Same, same here, man. It's good stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off here. Mike, thanks for joining in tonight. I appreciate your input on everything. Tomorrow's Monday, guys. Let's go out there and grab it by the nose and whip its ass. Enjoy it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Contact me. <laughs> Thank you Contact both. Me. Thank you, gentlemen. Y'all take care. Yeah, thank you. Kel McDougall.